Hello, students. In this session, we will look at the posterior triangle of neck. This cadaveric image displays the posterior triangle of the neck along with its boundaries. The skin and platysma covering the triangle have been incised and reflected to reveal deeper structures. At the top, the apex of the triangle is directed toward the mastoid process, while the base lies along the middle third of the clavicle. The interior boundary of the triangle is formed by the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the posterior boundary by the anterior border of the trapezius muscle. Superiorly, the apex is located at the junction of the tendinous parts of the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. Crossing the triangle, we can see the external jugular vein emerging just below the mandible traversing the anterior surface of the sternocleidomastoid and then piercing the investing layer of the deep fascia. Four important cutaneous nerves are visible piercing the investing fascia. The lesser occipital nerve, emerging from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and curving upward along the surface of the fascia. The greater auricular nerve, running upwards and forwards across the sternocleidomastoid. The transverse cervical nerve, located beneath the external jugular vein, dividing into ascending and descending branches. And the supraclavicular nerves, piercing the investing fascia and dividing into medial, intermediate, and lateral branches. This cadaveric image shows the deep contents in floor of the posterior triangle of the neck. The investing layer of the deep fascia has been stripped and reflected, revealing the muscular floor of the triangle. From above downward, we can identify the splenius capitis, levator scapulae, scalenus posterior, scalenus medius, and scalenus anterior muscles forming the floor. In the lower part of the triangle, the inferior belly of the omohyoid muscle is visible, crossing the cords of the brachial plexus, the scalenus medius, the long thoracic nerve, and the scalenus posterior. The dorsal scapular nerve, C5, can be seen piercing the scalenus medius and descending between the levator scapulae and scalenus posterior muscles. The long thoracic nerve, C5, C6, C7, is also seen piercing the scalenus medius muscle. The nerve to subclavius runs beneath the inferior belly of the omohyoid, traversing across the scalenus interior. Finally, the supraclavicular nerve is visible beneath the inferior belly of the omohyoid, lateral to the cervical part of the brachial plexus. Together, these structures clearly illustrate the deep neurovascular and muscular anatomy of the posterior triangle of the neck. The cadaveric image reveals the deep contents of the posterior triangle of the neck and the communication between the external and anterior jugular veins. The inferior belly of the omohyoid muscle is clearly visible, dividing the posterior triangle into the upper occipital triangle and the lower supraclavicular triangle. In the lower part of the occipital triangle, above the inferior belly of the omohyoid, we can see the thyrocervical trunk. This artery runs laterally for a short distance and then divides into the upper transverse cervical artery and the lower suprascapular artery. Proprioceptive fibers to the trapezius muscle can be seen crossing the transverse cervical artery near the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Emerging along the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid are the greater auricular nerve, the lesser occipital nerve, and the spinal accessory nerve. The anterior jugular vein lies close to the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, while the external jugular vein crosses anteriorly over the surface of the sternocleidomastoid.